um, you know, recap of where we're at right now. We received the source, we've composed it, we refined it to pinch the comp, and then we added it. Um, not gonna stand too long on this stage. There's tools that Scribe has for editing, but this is more where your personal editorial style comes in, or if you're working with a freelance copy editor, et cetera. Um, what we do have then at the end of the editing process, all the changes are accepted. And we have what we call the final manuscript. This, this is the, um, sometimes we call it the hub file or the hub docx or the hub word file, but this is ready for typesetting. And once we have this document, we move into the next stage of production, which is production. So we, we've concerned ourselves with content and structure. Now we're getting into rendering and print. So the hub comes in again because it produces this file here. So it turns that final manuscript uh, through a, a set of processes to the IDTT. The processes from uh, your standpoint are essentially clicking the button and saying word to IDTT. Um, it's IDTT is a text file. We don't really look at it too often. Uh, for the most part, we're just going to use it to go into typeset. Now there's a step kind of between these stages that uh, in design tag tests, yeah, that involve design, setting up your template. Um, that can happen in parallel with editing. So I won't go too into detail with that, but basically we're going to, unless people want me to, uh, we're going to define what these styles that we proposed as, how they are going to render. That gets back into that larger topic we discussed, structure versus rendering. So now, we're not necessarily con uh, concerned with applying structure. The structure's already there. We're gonna work with designers or you know, maybe we're gonna work with Scribe. Maybe if anyone has layout experience, we're gonna take all those styles from that IDTT document and actually say, okay, this is my look. Yeah. But typesetting, now we get into that stage where we're looking at the text, we're doing page layout, we're adding images. Those images could be provided by the author not need a template to compose. Um, you would need, I, I would say you would need the opposite. It's always helpful to have at least the composed, if not edited document, because then you can bring it into InDesign through this method again, this converting to IDTT, and then load it into InDesign. You get this big list of styles that match up with the comp from your Word document, and the designer basically goes through and determines behavior and rendering for all those different styles. They would need a box or a sidebar to be indicated somewhere here in that composed document. Um, and then you're gonna work with your typesetter designer to figure out well, how should that display? Should there be some graphic? Should there be some uh, visual element to it? Um, the amount of control you guys indicate on that is going to be a little different. I would kind of expect that the PMs are going to at least review the design or work with somebody to kind of figure it out. Uh, what we kind of expect the PMs to do in this case is at least work with the team to uh, have this, um, I'll talk about that one second. So you'd work with the team to make sure that all the proper practices are being observed. You don't have to be the typesetter, you don't have to be the designer, but you should at least be able to communicate and point them maybe to our resources and say, hey, this is gonna have a lot of these styles. You, the typesetter, need to like preserve this. You have to work with them in such a way to say, you know, don't edit this, don't edit the name of these styles, don't, you know, follow these practices. Here you go, here's scribe typesetting best practices. Please follow these to ensure that it's gonna be okay to convert from one step to another. So just again, you don't have to be the person that's doing it. Uh, you just have to sort of be able to point to all these different resources and say, you know, follow these guidelines. Um, and then if there's questions that you have, you have a designer who doesn't wanna work in this way, sometimes we have, clients who use freelancers that come to us and say, hey, wink, nudge, nudge, I'm gonna do my normal thing, is that okay? And we have to say, uh, no, that is not, that is not okay. Like, you're following a workflow, there are steps involved that uh, hook up with everything else. So you just don't want the typesetter designer to go off the rails and decide that they're gonna recompose your book. Um, when we do design, sometimes it's like a discussion with the, comp uh, the composed person. Sometimes I'll go to an editor or a project manager if I'm designing a book and say, I've noticed this, you know, maybe we can use a different style for this. Hey, should this be a different element? And we'll kind of clarify things. I, I the designer, I'm not just gonna like decide that I get to recompose the book because I need something to be blue or something. Um, 
And then, so your earlier question mark, would it be efficient in parallel? I think so. Elvis, I don't know if you have a different feeling on this. Yeah. I, I like to do the um, editing and designing in parallel. Oftentimes, the structure is not going to change drastically, especially with something as big as a textbook. So it's very easy for both the designer and editor to work with that composed manuscript. And then the designer can talk about the behavior of things, how these elements are going to work. They can define how things are going to look all while the editor is um, working with the edited manuscript. It may sound like there could be a problem because we have this split here, but what happens is that basically the design uh, functions as a template. You take that final word manuscript here at the last row or the first row, last portion, and then the designer is going to clear out all the text in their InDesign template, convert the new document to IDTT, flow in the new file. All the changes that were made in editing are preserved. And it doesn't matter that we started with some older file because we're not doing the whole book. We're just doing a sample to set up everything. And then we have it ready to go so that we can just flow the template or the text right into the template. Right. And just to, to hop in there, um, mm -hmm. just from the project manager's uh, perspective, um, because often like Tim and I will work together in the same way, like after we we have a composed file, the editor can go off and as Tim just said, you know, continue editing that composed file while, for example, as a project manager, I'll talk to Tim and I'll say, Tim, you know, the composed file is ready here. He will start working on the design, right? So that split happens. But um, the there isn't any issue here because then let's say during the edit because just thinking of like worst case scenar scenario after we go through the edit we send that edit to the author and the author says hey you know I am actually not going to use sidebars at all bring this all into the text or anything like that um, that's a really extreme example um, but if something like that were to happen the we still have the flexibility because the design is just a template and once we receive this final manuscript i will let tim know hey this changed in between you know the design and now that we have this final file and tim will say i will make the adjustments to the design create a new sample and then as a project manager i'll just communicate with the with the client or with the author in in your cases um and say hey look now we've adjusted for what you wanted and you know our design is proceeding as um, as it should be, um, so um, you shouldn't see any like issues because of that uh, split. And in fact, um, as Mark suggested, it is uh, kind of efficient to have like those two pieces working at the same time because they sort of, in a way, can inform um, each other. So, right. Yeah. Um, I was about to bring up some samples of exactly what we're looking at here. They were the ones that I sent over to uh, Karen, which I believe got distributed to everybody else. So unless there's any questions, we're going to take a look at how what we're doing in Word eventually translates to what happens in the print version of the book.